It's no secret that luxury brands have been charging a huge premium for their products. From Prada selling a paperclip for $185 to Balenciaga selling a trash bag for $1,790. But how much does it actually cost for these high-end brands to manufacture their products? We all know that luxury brands are secretive about their production costs, but in this video, I'm going to be doing a detailed analysis on seven luxury brands. We're going to take a look at each brand's best-selling products and analyze its material and workmanship of each item. With that, we'll discover exactly how much the production costs and exactly how much they are marking up their prices. And at the end of this video, I'm going to tell up all the results to find out which luxury brand has the highest markups and which has the lowest. So keep watching. Before I get started, get rid of your old bulky bifold wallet and get yourself a beautiful and minimalist extra card holder. Each one of their colorways are absolutely stunning, especially their newly released Oil Slick. Let me tell you, the Oil Slick sheet is gorgeous and mesmerizing. Extra's boldness to use colors that's never been done by other brands is what makes them the best minimalist wallet brand on the market. Not only do these look good, but also the craftsmanship and functionality is top notch. It is made from ultra durable and high quality space gray 6061 T6 aluminum. The quick card access with just one click of a button is a game changer and a slim profile makes it so easy to carry around. Each wallet features an expandable aluminum backplate. It holds up to 12 cards in cash and even blocks RFID to prevent wireless theft. So check out the website. They have so many awesome items and right now is the perfect time because now Extra is having their anniversary sale. Plus you can get the 25% off use my discount code MFF at checkout. So click the link in the description or pinned comment and I promise that you won't be disappointed. Let's start off with our first luxury brand and that is Christian Dior. Dior was founded in 1946 in Paris. His first collection, New Look, which featured full skirts and feminine silhouettes, catapulted Dior into stardom. Soon after, he opened numerous stores in major cities. In 1980, LVMH acquired Dior and introduced to us its first men's division, which brought us the B23s. The B23s are no doubt a head turner. The Dior printed upper emphasizes to strangers that, hey, I got luxury brand money to spend. The upper is made of canvas. They call it their white and black Dior oblique canvas. But canvas is a very basic material. It's a cloth-like fabric. It's extremely inexpensive. So a lot of lower tier sneaker brands use it like Chuck Taylors and Reeboks. They also added transparent panels, which are made of plastic to give the shoe some structure and support. Plastic is a very low quality material for a sneaker, especially when you're constantly bending your foot as you walk. So this plastic is prone to cracking. As you can see, that's exactly what happened to this guy's B23s. For the lining, we have microfiber, which again is a dirt cheap material. The midsole and outsole is made from rubber with a reinforced rubber toe. This is again nothing special. Almost every brand uses rubber soles because it's cheap and easy to mass produce. So not factoring wholesale price, what is the total material cost? Canvas material goes for about $4 per yard and microfiber goes for about $2 per yard. A sneaker uses a yard each, so $6 for fabric. Not accounting for tooling costs, rubber outsoles goes for about $3 and EV insoles goes for about $2. Plastic panel goes for about 50 cents. These small items like eyelets and laces are really negligible. I would estimate the total material cost to be around $12. For the construction of this shoe, this is made in Italy, but I suspect that their production process is very similar to lower tier brands like Converse. I would estimate around $20 to build this shoe, and that is a high end estimate. So in total, I would estimate around $32 to produce this shoe. Selling at $1,200, that is a total margin of 3,650%. For that, I have to rate Dior an F. Next up, we have Gucci. Gucci started in 1921 in Italy as a producer of leather goods and horse saddles. Gucci rose to prominence in the 50s and 60s for its high quality craftsmanship and unique designs. In 1995, the head of Gucci, Maurizio Gucci, was shot by a hitman hired by his ex-wife. The whole story was made into a movie called House of Gucci. Then in 1999, Gucci was bought out by Caring. Let's analyze the Marmot Wallet. The Marmot Wallet is a standard leather bifold wallet. It has pebble leather texture with a double G hardware glue on the front. It's not specified the exact leather on their website, but I do know that it's made out of calfskin leather. Calfskin is one of the highest quality leather there is. It's made from a calf or a baby cow, so the texture is extremely soft and supple. Most Gucci leather products uses calfskin leather, but the messed up thing is that they coat it with a thick and cheap plastic coating. 
The plastic will make the wallet waterproof, but in turn, you sacrifice the feel of that authentic calfskin leather texture. It's like buying Wagyu and making a sausage out of it. For the craftsmanship, it is very well put together. Stitching looks great and everything looks on point, but then again, a wallet is not so hard to put together. The edges are painted, which is terrible for the long term because eventually the paint will crack. Another downside to the plastic coating is that it's sensitive to heat, so it will melt and damage the wallet. So not factoring wholesale price, what does the total material cost? Calfskin leather sells for $190 per 10 square feet. On average, a wallet uses two square feet of material, so 20%. So leather costs add up to about $38 plus the hardware, so bump that up to $40. For construction, the wall is made in Italy, so I would estimate around $5 to put this wall together for a total cost of $45 to produce the Marmot wallet. So at $45 to produce and the sell price is $590, that is a total margin of 1211%. That sounds a lot, but with all things considered, I would have to rate Gucci a B. Next up on the list is Balenciaga. Balenciaga was founded in 1917 by Cristobal Balenciaga. In 1937, he moved to Paris where he opened his iconic fashion house. He quickly gained a reputation for his craftsmanship, use of high quality fabrics, and creating shapes that's never been seen in women's fashion. Fast forward to 2001, Caring acquires Balenciaga. After the acquisition, Balenciaga started pushing out insane products like their coffee mug for $125 and their towel skirt for $925. $25. Seriously? Are you seeing this? But anyways, let's focus on one of their best sellers and that is the Speed Sneakers. The Speed is a sock-like sneaker, they are going for that barefoot feel. The advertised material is a technical 3D recycled knit, which is all buzzwords that don't mean anything. Essentially, it's a mesh-like fabric made of 92% polyester and 8% elastane. It feels no different from any other knit sock shoes like the Adidas NMDs. For the outsole, they advertise it as no memory sole technology by color sole unit. It's essentially just a rubber sole that you'll find from every other sneaker out there. I feel like Balenciaga is purposely throwing out all these buzzwords to cover the fact that they use very cheap materials on their products. Then the real kicker is the Balenciaga logo. It's screen printed onto the sneaker instead of embroidered. So not factoring wholesale price, what does the total material cost? Polyester spandex blend runs about $10 per yard. A sneaker on average uses a whole yard of material. EVA rubber insole is about $2. Then the rubber outsole is $3. So material wise, I would estimate $15 to manufacture the shoe. There's really nothing special about the shoe construction wise. I would argue that it's easier to make the shoe than your conventional sneaker because of the lack of eyelets, shoelaces, etc. Given that it's made in Italy, I would estimate around $15 to make this shoe. So in total, I would estimate around $30 to produce the Speed sneakers. Selling at $995, that is a total margin of 3,216%. For that, I would have to rate Balenciaga an F. Next up on the list is Louis Vuitton. LV was founded in Paris in 1854. They started out specializing in crafting luxury trunks for rich clients. They opened their first store in 1885 and continued to expand globally in major cities. In 1896, LV's son Georges Vuitton introduced the iconic monogram canvas featuring LV initials and floral pattern. Fast forward 130 years to this day, this pattern is still being used on almost all of their products. Let's take a deeper look at their monogram bags. For the material, LV uses canvas coated in PVC or vinyl which is a terrible material for the long term. Vinyl is the third most widely produced plastic polymer and it is extremely cheap. So that's why it's not advertised on their website. It's not as luxurious as actual leather bags. The plastic coating is easily damaged by chemicals like hand sanitizer or sunscreen. It's also sensitive to heat so if you wear it out in the sun all day then you'll most likely notice some discoloration in the fabric. On the inside, LV uses nylon or cotton. For the trims and handle, LV uses Vaketa leather. Vaketa leather is a full grain veg tan cowhide leather. Full grain is the highest quality leather you can get, and vegetable tan is the most expensive and time intensive process you can do for leather. The leather surface is finished so the texture is smooth and silky to the touch. It's sad that LV doesn't use this type of leather for the whole body of the bag. On a side note, I saw this ridiculous comment on Reddit where someone's claiming that they prefer coated canvas over full grain leather. If you're paying over $2,000 for a bag and you prefer plastic over real leather, then LV has successfully brainwashed you 
and you need to rethink all your life choices. For the hardware, the website mentions gold and color metal pieces. LV used to use brass for all the products, but brass is expensive, and to maximize their profits, LV now uses some kind of metal alloy coated in gold paint in almost all their bags. LV uses Riri zippers which are made from Switzerland, and they are more expensive and higher quality than YKK zippers. For the workmanship, this bag is very well made. Stitching is even and the edge painting is neatly done. So now factoring wholesale price, what is the total material cost? Coated canvas sells for $12.99 a yard. Because of the size of the bag, it most likely uses the entire yard. Full grain veg tan leather for its trims sells for $80 per 10 square feet. I would estimate LV uses 7 square feet, so $56. And cotton lining costs about $5 per yard. For the hardware, metal alloy is very cheap. Ruby zippers are high quality and sells for around $30. Considering size, I would estimate the total material cost to be $104. Then the workmanship of this bag, a lot of meticulous details, from painting the edges of the leather to the stitching. Given that the bag was made in either US, Italy, France, or Spain, I would estimate around $40 to construct this bag. Overall, I would estimate $144 to produce the LV duffel bag, and they are selling it for $2,500, so that has a total margin of $1,630. 36%. For that, I would have to rate Louis Vuitton a C. Next up on the list is Hermes. Hermes was founded in 1837, mostly selling high quality leather goods for horses. They opened their first store in the 1880s and started to include a broader range of leather goods like travel bags. In the mid to late 1900s, they developed the Birkin and Kelly, which has become the most sought after bags in the world. They also developed the iconic and world renowned H Bell. Let's take a closer look and do an analysis on it. The H bell is crafted with a very high level of detail and precision. Holes are precisely centered to exact distances. Stitch length and death state is very consistent. Unlike the Hermes wash straps that are sewn by hand, the H belts are machine sewn. Which makes me feel like this is a mass produced item rather than something luxurious. The edges are cut and then burnished, which is processed using a hot iron going over it until the edge has a smooth finish. Almost every single belt does this because it's so fast and easy to do. A high end belt, however, uses a method called skiving, which is they fold over the edges so that the top and bottom edges have full outside leather and no cutting edge is visible. It doesn't just look better, but it takes more time, more material, and more expensive to do. For the material, Hermes uses a high quality full gray chrome tanned leather. Chrome tan is cheaper than veg tan because it's quicker to produce but it does break in faster and is a lot easier to take care of compared to veg tan leather. They also added a unique texture so it's more difficult to create counterfeits. The belts are thin but they use two layers of leather. Looking at the holes you can see that there is a third lining of leather in the middle because the belts are reversible. For the hardware, Hermes uses a brass buckle that is gold or platinum plated. Brass is a great material because it ages well. Not accounting for wholesale price, let's talk about the total cost of the materials. 10 square feet of full grade leather retails for $80. The belt length is let's say 2 feet long and 1.5 and inches wide. So that's 72 square inches or half a square foot of leather. Half is 5% of 10 square feet, so that is $4 worth of leather. Since there's leather on both sides, multiply that by 2, so $8 worth of leather. Then there's a thin third lining of leather in the middle, so that brings the leather cost up to $12. For the hardware, brass is $1. 82 per pound. Given that it's gold or platinum plated, I would estimate that the buckle costs no more than $5 to produce. For the craftsmanship, there definitely is a high level of detail and precision, but overall it's machine sewn and it's mass produced. Given that the bell is made in Switzerland, I would estimate about $8 to produce. So that brings the total cost to $25 to produce this bell. Our mats is selling for $900, so that brings the total margin to 3,500%. For that, I have to rate our mats as F. Next up on the list is Saint Laurent. Saint Laurent started his career working for Christian Dior in the 1950s. In 1961, he decided to open his first store in Paris. His brand stood out because he was constantly challenging gender norms in fashion. The tuxedo jacket for women was his best seller. In 1999, Caring bought out Saint Laurent and introduced a new line of clothing for men. Let's take a closer look at one of their flagship products and that is the Wyatt boot. The Wyatt boot is made of calfskin leather. Calfskin is one of the highest quality type of leather so it's good to see YSL not being cheap about the material. It is made from calf or baby cow so the texture is extremely soft and supple. The leather is finer gray 
grain and smaller pores that are barely noticeable. Aside from the small pores and light grains, it is usually highly polished. You'll be able to see a reflection in this like a mirror, which explains the shiny finish on these boots. Because YSL uses high quality and expensive leather, they have to cut costs somewhere, right? This is where the heel and construction comes in. The heel is constructed similar to how lady heels are made. It's hollow all the way down. The heel block is made of cheap plastic. If they wanted this to be high quality, then they should have made the heel stack entirely of leather. Instead, they added this veneer on the outside to make it look like it's made of a leather stack. Eventually, the veneer will start to peel and you'll see the low quality craftsmanship in this. Another cost-cutting sacrifice they made is their construction. This is Blake Stitch rather than Goodyear Well. The Blake Stitch is simple where they stitch the outer sole, insole, and upper together. A Goodyear Well involves stitching the upper part of the shoe to a well and then attaching the well to the sole. This makes the shoe a lot more durable, water resistant, and a lot easier to resole the shoes. So what is the total material cost? Calfskin leather sells for about $190, per 10 square feet. A pair of boots takes the entire 10 square feet to make, plus other materials like the insole. I would estimate around $195 for the material. For the construction, this is made in Italy, so I estimate $20 to construct this shoe. So in total, I would estimate around $215 to produce this shoe. Selling at $1,190, that is a total margin of 453%. I know that's still high, but considering luxury brands that we just rated, I would have to put YSL at the top with an S grade. And last we have Rolex. Rolex was founded in 1905 in London. It was originally named Wilford and Davis until it was rebranded in 1999 to Rolex because it's more easy to pronounce. Over the next 50 years, Rolex completely changed the game for the watch industry, introducing iconic models like its Oyster Perpetual, Explorer, Submariner, Daytona, just to name a few. To this day, it's still regarded as the most prestigious and luxurious watch brands. Let's take a deeper look at the Submariner. The Submariner uses a stainless steel case with a unidirectional rotating bezel with a ceramic insert. Sapphire crystal glass with a oyster steel case which is steel 904L. They switched from 316 to 904L back in 2001. From a cost standpoint, 904L costs about $3,000 more per ton compared to the 316. But when we factor in per cost, material will cost only $5 more per watch. For the stainless steel model, Rolex really uses the best material for the watches. I will estimate around $400 for the material alone. For the workmanship, this is where it gets more pricey compared to a craftsmanship of a wallet or a shoe. Watchmakers in the US earn on average $57,000 per year and they are highly skilled. However, a lot of Rolexes like the Submariner are largely machined, meaning most of the parts are automated. The only manual labor would be assembly and finishing, but of course Rolex has very rigorous quality control. With that said, I would estimate $500 to put this watch together. That brings the total production cost to $900, and the starting price for a Submariner is $9100, so that is a total margin of 911%. For that, I would have to rate Rolex an A. Here's a final ranking of all 7 luxury brands ranked by its total margins with YSL being the most generous to its consumers and Dior being the most greedy. Disclaimer, this is just an analysis on just one of their products. I know each product has their own margins but being that I chose one of their best selling products, this video should give you some idea of the margin range that each luxury brand tries to aim for. So that's it for this week's video. Let me know in the comments what other luxury brands I should try out next. If this video helped you guys out, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.